I'm sitting here with a motherfucking guru. You know what I'm saying? Um, welcome to Kate Got Your Tongue. I'm here with the motherfucking legendary Benzino. Man, what's up, Cat? What's that? Oh, Cat, what up, bro? Man, hey, look here, man. It's a pleasure and an honor to have you man. sitting here with me. You know what I'm talking about? All mine, bro, though. I'm here with you. You know what man, I'm saying? Man, look here. Hey, hey, Let's hey. get it. I appreciate it, man. It's all love, for real. We go to the motherfucker. I know it, man. It tastes so good, <laughs> don't it, man? It tastes so good. First of all, <laughs> y'all want to send shouts out to my guys, Mayor and uh, H to Don. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, like they came through with me. Big shout to Flossie. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. I met LAD. They hooked me up. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Josh. You know what I'm saying? I want to get get that out the way because that's how you know that's how I'm here right now. Yeah, for sure. Shout out to Josh, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He the biggest down in NC. Yeah. But um, we here. Um, I'm blessed to be here with the greatest, one of the greatest. Man. A lot of people don't know your track record huh. and uh, yeah. how much you contribute to the culture. Yeah. I mean, I've done, you know, I think I've done my part, you know. Man, hey, you, hey, you done, done a done lot. Um, you know, I love hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, people that probably see me speak before like um my knowledge of hip hop it goes back you know um you know, I was there since really day one almost you know hip hop is 50 years old mm. so you know I first time I think I was shit I'm 58 now so I was like 11 years old in my grandfather's basement so that was probably like if hip hop was 73 it got introduced to me I think in 76 77 so from what you saw over the fifty, the last fifty years, mm -hmm. how would you say hip hop has evolved or dissolved? Mm. Which one? That's a good question. I mean, it's it's it, no, it's done nothing but evolve. You know, um, what what people really have to understand is like where hip hop came from. If they could really kind of like um, picture in their mind, like you know, like the South Bronx was, you know. Back in the 70s, if you just go back and look at some YouTube videos or pictures, the South Bronx was like one of the worst conditions that anybody could live in as far as a community. Um, a lot of black and Latino and some white people lived in the South Bronx at the time. And when you look at those, when you look back then, it just was, you know, it was horrible. I mean, you know, buildings and, 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 and it just was fucked up. And that's where hip hop came up. So it makes you think like something that people live that in those conditions, you know what I'm saying? Of yeah. course, it was one of the poorest neighborhoods probably in New York and um, a multi-trillion dollar industry was came out of that. That's crazy. So if they, if, if when I look at it, I'm looking at it like, well, damn, if that's where it came from, then imagine what anybody could do in, in conditions that were not like that, but still struggling conditions, which we all come from. And to me, that that just shows how powerful hip hop is and powerful people we are. Now, you know, uh, living in rural conditions, poor conditions, it makes you creative. Mm. It makes you creative. Yeah, you know? I mean, shit, you know, it's really, I mean, that, you know, what else can you do? I think. The more money you have, the, you know, honestly, you know, you become lazy. Oh you know, shit! You know I'm now I'm talking. We talking about money now. I, you know, I ain't. I have never uh, reached the statue of you, you know. But uh, while we talking about money, you know, um, I'd like to ask you how much have have how much money have you ever touched or been able to touch? Because I know just you being who you are and you know the different type of business ventures you had you touch millions you play with millions yeah um you know the source magazine which i was a part of um part hold of, on tell them again man oh, yeah 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 the source magazine the source I, magazine I, man yeah, yeah part owner of the source magazine and the um, reason why you put posters on your motherfucking wall Yep. And you want to be these niggas. It wasn't no social media. You hear no. me? This was hand-to-hand, -hand, you know, real-life footwork. Yeah. I mean, you know, everything was outside. You know, communication was outside. And I was just, 
I was talking the other day and I was just saying it. I'm like, you know, people, even if we had a phone back then, we wasn't even on it that much. I mean, if you had to talk to somebody, if you had to see somebody, if you had to do business with somebody, of course, if you had beef with somebody, you wouldn't see them. You was outside. <laughs> in the in the community, there's something about communication face to face that will never be duplicated. You know, it don't matter. You know, I understand social media and the computers and the internet, but face to face is what really makes things happen. Um, you know, back then we was the first, really, as far as if you want to, if you was in a, a city and you want to know about another city, we really was the only kind of bridge for that the magazine, the Source magazine. Right. And, you know, kind of started that whole hip-hop journalistic thing that came Vibe, that came XXL later. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of great magazines. You know, Source was the greatest, but there was still a lot of great magazines because at that time, hip-hop hip -hop was so big, it just would be silly that um, we, we're only putting 12 artists, you know, per year on our magazines. And there was a lot of artists who deserved to be on covers. So the more magazine, people just think that I didn't like XXL and I didn't, back then of course it's competition, but in, as far as for hip hop, you know what I'm saying? All those magazines were great. So tell me this, you being one of the founders, one of the people that built the sources, the source magazines, mm -hmm. how do you feel when you, how did you feel Walk me through, take me through how you felt when you saw the Double XL magazine just come out. I mean, it's like Coca Cola, Pepsi. You know what I'm saying? Like, at first, we're like, you know, it, it makes us like, okay, we really, we already had to jump on them. Me and Dave were the owners of the source. Okay. The owners of XXL were somebody that owned, like, um, back then, these magazines called Field and Streaming. Uh, Hunting, uh, Illustrated, like a lot of these offset magazines, like it was, a, there was, there was a publishing company. So when they started seeing us making money from advertising, then they say, "Hold up, we can do that. And just put somebody else on, on the cover." And they basically copied it. But <laughs> the owners were that wasn't in the culture. Again, they owned a distribution of magazines, and their thing was hunting, fishing, golf, digest, a bunch of other shit, and it, they just got into it because it was profitable. Which is business. Again, all this shit back then, being younger, you know, me from the streets, it's fuck everybody. But now, <laughs> but now, but now much mature, much more intelligent, you know what I'm saying? It just made sense. You know. So tell me this. Um, since we're talking about the Double XL magazine, and I know you being from the streets. Yes, sir. Probably. I heard I heard uh stories um about you slapping Elliot Wilson. Um the Elliot thing, damn, Did you, is I that said, true? Okay, okay. Is that well, true? Um, I kind of choked him up. I really didn't slap him. <laughs> just, you know, so I didn't. I didn't see. Take, 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 take me through that day. Tell me what happened. Well, let me Ms. go. Lino. Let me go before that, because that that's a question that ain't nobody ever asked. Cat, <laughs> give me some cat. God, give me some hell cat. Because ain't nobody ever asked. They that say question. you slapped the shit let, out. Let this me nigga. just. Let me no 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 no. Let me just. They probably got that mixed up with something else. But El Elliot was used to work for us. We hired Elliot. He started with the source. And Elliot was, you know, he was he was like assistant editor assistant. He was assistant. He didn't he wasn't a big boy journalist yet. He okay. was trying to climb the ranks, which was dope. Because a lot of a lot of guys climbed the ranks and they ended up being amazing journalists, which end up doing movies. A lot of the guys from the source are doing movies and MTV producing and produ I mean a lot of the alumni from the store source are doing amazing things now, and shout out to all of them. Um, but Elliot, when XSL came, they grabbed Elliot. You know what I'm saying? So Elliot went over there. It just so happened that our office was on Park Ave, and their office was like three blocks over. So um, this was the thing when the Eminem beef was going on, and he put he put like some cartoon to me and my son, some crazy shit. In the back of the match. Saying he was playing too much. So I walked over there. Me and my guys walked over there. And um, what went up in there. And he came to the front. You know what I'm saying? Just had to snatch him up a little bit. Throw him against the wall. Now, this this was the crazy things. And, I, and, and, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to act like, you know what I'm saying? But back then it was like, you know, he, 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 um, he took it like a man. You know what I'm saying? He, he apologized. You know what I'm saying? 
But his whole staff came up, and I had my guys, and it was the whole staff of the XXL. So, but they wasn't doing nothing. He was telling them, just chill, just chill. They wasn't going to do nothing anyway. So I pointed them, if you ever in your life ever try to. You hold them. With me. You hold them, you uh, motherfucker. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, you know what I'm saying? I didn't appreciate that. You know, that's my son. Like, don't play with my son. Like, even if you would have did it to me, I, I still would have did it. But, but, but you made it worse. And, um, yeah, so after that, it was understanding, you know, because that was the whole um, XXL source, Eminem, Benzino time. And he got caught up in that. You know, once the situation happened with me and Eminem, XXL found a way for them. Hey, we can go all the way crazy with Eminem. You know what I'm saying? So they, you know, like they just partnered up with Eminem at that point. That's when right. XXL, people don't know, XXL actually partnered up with Interscope Records. So everybody's talking about integrity of the source and all this when I was there or whatever. But... When when that happened, they actually took over, um, and a lot of Interscope's artists was going through it, and a lot of other artists wasn't getting their just due. And I don't, you know, people. The reason people probably don't bring up that they're mad at XXL because nobody, everybody knew XXL was just a copycat of the source. Yeah, they say they tried to be. Nobody cared. They didn't BT have the five too, mic huh? system. BT also stole your, your 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 the source magazine model. I mean, they they. They stole the Source Awards. They, they stole the Source Awards. Yes. Yeah, so we had um. There was no BET Awards prior to the Source Awards. So this is a story too, and, and Steve. So I might as well say this, but again, now the Smack story came in with um, who's the guy that ran Stephen Hill? So Stephen Hill, one day, it was something I was trying to get my music played up there. BT. He was the program. He was the big guy, the biggest guy at BT. Okay. So he used to be in Boston on a radio station. So Dave had went up there and um, was like, yo, we trying. He's like, I came back. He said, yo, he said that you smacked him back in Boston. He said that you came up to the radio station. You didn't want to play his stuff. It was at WILD. This is years ago. This is like 80s. And he said, I went up there and slapped him. Now, I, I'm going to be honest. He said that. He said, yeah, you slapped me. I was like, I don't remember slapping you. You know what I'm saying? This is Stephen Hill. You know what I'm saying? And I remember Stephen. I don't remember the slap or none of that. And I'm, and I'm being honest. You know, it's years. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but he said that I slapped him. So. A uh, man going to remember when you slap him. That's crazy because I don't remember. <laughs> that's nuts, man. You know, if I, you know, I apologize. I told him. I said, if I did, I apologize. Can I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. How did you feel when the BET Awards stole your model? I was, I was, that shit, I was, I Because I get lie. mad when I see somebody wear the same shoes I wear or the same shirt. <laughs> It'll make me go home and change. <laughs> nah, that's, that's, see, we signed a two-year deal with, with BET. And we had built the Source Awards up. The prior Source Awards, when we first did the first one, like in 94 and 95, those was like the first two. 94 and 95. Well, remember the 90, the 94 one is when, Pac grabbed the mic from Q Tip and did out on bail. And okay. was and what like went and grabbed the sound man. This is our sound man. He got somebody at the sound man. We don't even know this. So the sound man got out on bail, queued up. He grabbed the mic, brought the um outlaws on, and did out on bail, grabbed the mic from Q Tip. <laughs> Just grabbed it off. And Q Tip was accepting his um award, source award. So that was that. And then the next year is when Suge came on and was talking about, hey, any artists out there tired of the man all up in the videos? The videos. Come to remember that? You remember that? Of course. Who don't? So it's hip hop culture. So people gotta realize when we our first one we did was was with Bernie Mac. Rest in peace to Bernie. R.I.P. Mac. Bernie Mac, one of the greats. And when we did it, we're in the um Paramount Theater, which is inside Madison Square Garden. And the lights are fucking up and like it like it took us a while to get it right. Like we didn't profit, like we lost money. Me and Dave lost money. The Source lost money with the Source Awards all up until we did the deal, the very last one with BET. We signed a two-year contract, Stephen Hill. Okay. Stephen Hill, remember? Stephen Hill. Stephen Hill, the one that said I slapped him. Yeah. I can't remember. That motherfucker remember. And I still apologize, though I didn't remember. He's sorry. All right, so. But, hey. Come on, cat. So, we killed it. We, we made about a, almost... 
a million and a half dollar profit. We was like, oh, should we finally? We did about seven, eight of them and didn't make no money. We was with UPN 33 and we, we would do them in syndication, but we knew we could build it up. The whole thing was, since we're making money with the source, we're just going to put that into it because we know we can build it up. We could see it. And this took years. You know what I'm saying? Some, sometimes, like, you, it, you know, no one else is going to see it, but if you see it, some, you have to have the patience to build it. And we built it. I, like, I was proud of that. Then the second year, they dropped us and did the, and did the awards. Now, now look, we had a lawsuit, right? And then I, I and I regret this. I do. I can say I regret it now, but Man, I told, I regret I told Dave not not to sue him because I felt because I, because I felt like Coy, Coy's career and everything. I didn't want nothing to be, and I felt like at the time I was making music, I didn't want to be break burn no bridges with BET by suing him. But but they broke a contract of two years with us. If you could have go back, and I, I would have sued them. You better. I would have sued, sued the shit out no, there. No, no, no. I, I, I don't even man. Care. I don't. I don't regret. You know. I, I don't live with regrets. Right. But that one, and then um, you know, you know, I turned down me and Dave we turned down fifty five million from Bob Johnson. Um. So Bob Johnson owned BET. How could you sleep at night? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. Like, again, we was building it like. Me and Dave looked at that it was worth eighty million. We looked at it that if we get it to eighty million, then we can go public. We was this close to going public before we lost it. That, and, I, and this back then, I didn't even know what going public was. I just right. knew it was like public. Right. So Dave, you know, Dave from Harvard. Okay. So it was the whole thing was he, you know, he taught me what the EBITDA is. That means that whatever your profit is, you times it by whatever your cash profit is in the business, you times it by ten. That's what your business is worth. So, so Bob had just signed sold BET for three billion. Him and his wife, like they sold that shit. So we flew to DC, just me and Dave. And um, he came out, you know what I'm saying? He was just packing his shit up. You could see his office was like, that was it. He was out of there. Like this man, he was the richest black man in the United States that he sold it for $3 billion, him and his wife. Shit. Sold it to Viacom. So Bob, he bought the Panthers, bought a whole bunch of shit. So Bob um, comes out. He's like, so I'm going to write down a piece of paper exactly you know, what my offer is. I don't want to negotiate. I don't want to talk. And... Um, I'm gonna leave and I'm gonna come back and y'all gonna give me an answer. And you know, he he really didn't want to talk. He was it looked at like, I don't know, but like again, me, I go up there, I got a Adidas shirt on, leather pants, I'm, you know what I'm saying, smelling like weed and shit. Dave, you know what I'm saying, got like a polo shirt. He's not necessarily with a suit. Bob comes out, flyed out, suit. Um, you know, so I'm sure he was looking at me like, uh, you know what I'm saying? It just seemed I just I don't know if that's true. But I, I kind of felt little vibes anyways. But he wrote it down, left. Dave opened it up, and it said $55 million. And I was like, you know, we started doing the math. I started doing the math. And you know, we had owed the bank at that time like $30 million, right? Right. And, uh, and I, then I said, taxes is going to take the other half. Now, if he would have let it stay on for five years, right, to, to, to still run the source, mm -hmm. and then we can get salaries and still run it, because we still knew that we could get there. If you would have let us stay on, then we would have took the 55. He said, we can't stay on. So we said, forget it then. And we turned him down. That's how a man turns down, $55 million. $55 million. Then I'd be thinking, I don't think of it sometimes. I'd be trying to block it out sometimes, right? But, but, <laughs> but, but for real, but the way I look at it is where I fucked up was that I, we didn't have to pay the bank Although we was paying like seven hundred thousand, like every four or five months on principal, just for fucking interest. Okay, you know what I'm saying of what we owed the bank. So, you know what I'm saying. I mean, you know, you you, you can't live with regrets. You know, I'm, I'm a hustler, so I yeah. always, you know, what I'm saying, whatever I don't have today, there's tomorrow for me to get. Come on now, you feel me? Now tell me this: How do you feel about the double XL still being around? I mean, it's, it's like cool. when you see when you see it today. The thing I liked about them was they they hopped on the um on the freshman thing where they would put on the cover of the new right. up and yeah I liked it that 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 was the one original thing these motherfuckers did after all these years okay. that I really liked everything else was just a carbon copy of us so I look at them as my sons you know right honestly vibe is like the cousin.
because Vibe never was hip hop. You know? Right. Vibe was R and B. You know what I'm saying? But it was good because the culture needed it. The culture needed Vibe. Right. You know what I'm saying? The culture needed a, a source and an XXL because the bottom line was, like I said, hip hop was growing and there's way more than 12 artists that deserve to be on the cover. So it's not like we was, it was all right. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, Coke and Pepsi both sell, they both get it. I know this you know what I'm saying? Coke get more. We was Coke. <laughs> we was Coke. That's that Coke. Um, tell me this. Um, <clears throat> I'm high in the motherfucker. I hey tell, man, you I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that's that gas I'm now. I'm tell you that though. I'm telling you, that's that pressure. Shit, that's that pressure. No, you be in LA when you just be high as fuck. Because you know you got to tell <sighs> me this, man. California Love California, man. Do Carly Red got some good pussies? <laughs> <laughs> you call it red got some good pussy, man. I'm yo, yo, you know it's crazy. <laughs> no, 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 no. For real, you know it's crazy. No, I'm for real. No, 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 no. A lot like it's it's nuts, right? Because um and I'm talking throughout the years now, because this is almost almost like nine years. Eight <laughs> now years. hold on, hold on. It's hold almost on. like eight years. Since a lot of people calling. don't know that you didn't have some of the baddest yeah. in the world. I mean, I I I've done all right. Lisa Ray? Oh man, see we Listen, and, and, listen, and, and I listen, ain't saying because Lisa, I, I heard you and Lisa Ray was on another level. No, no, it's yeah. it's, it's 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 some things you know you got you got some women that you just fuck with. You know what I'm saying? No, she was but like Lisa Ray was like my um, nigga put his glasses on. He no, got an answer. No, hey, no, 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 no. Lisa Ray was like really, really good people. Like people don't understand when me and when me and Dave lost the sauce. Let me tell you the truth. Did story. she ever? Did she ever loan you any money? Let me tell you about Lisa Ray. When me and Dave lost the source, Lisa Ray was the princess, remember, over on the island. Mm -hmm. Remember that? She was a real princess. Queen, yeah. matter of fact. Queen. Yeah. So, yeah, she she gave us money, you know what I'm saying, to get on our feet. Because, see, we we, I, we let Lisa Ray host the Source Awards, and then we then we, then we gave a big check with um, Source All Access TV. Like, like that was my homie, man. Like, like I love Lisa Ray, and Lisa Ray love me. You know and we all like love Lisa Ray, man. But you just you lucky <laughs> enough for her to love That's you back. Y'all love. You lucky enough for her to love you back. She's great people. We love Lisa people Ray. People don't understand how people don't understand how like people see that side of Lisa Ray, but the other side of Lisa Ray really is a real. And people don't really kind of take for granted of what being a queen is, even to an island. So she tasted that life, and she's a real shrewd businesswoman. You know what I'm saying? Like she's a very serious businesswoman. People don't understand she's about her business. And I think people take for granted how big she is as an actress in our time and she stayed relevant in the game. And like, she you know stayed she's so fine. I mean that still just, that hasn't changed. But I got a girl now and I love my baby and I love you, Ashley. Hey, hey, you hey, hey, Benzino loves you. Hell. You hear me? We Black not hey, we not downplaying man. shit. You hear me? Damn, love my baby. Um but in 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 our culture would would you say that you and Lisa Ray was the first, the world's first Jay Z and Beyonce? Nah, hell no. Oh. no. Before the social I'm, I'm media, I'll be honest with me. Okay, so look, because Benzino, there was a it's time. It's 2024. You can't get a bitch to give you a, a one red cent these days. Nah, 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 nah. That listen, I'm telling you, like <laughs> she, she did that, and and really that right there, just to me, because you know, because you absolutely right what you just said. Imagine what you just said, like. That's some real shit. Not even these days, them days. I'm talking about them days. It's even, them days was harder. Chicks are getting way more money now than back when I was coming up. Right. Chicks wasn't getting money like they get now. So if they gave you something, they good. OnlyFans wasn't even made up back then. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure if OnlyFans was back then, bitches be, excuse me, women be getting money. But yeah, <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? OnlyFans right now got these chicks eating. I got OnlyFans too, by the way, at King Zeno. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. Hey, speaking of your OnlyFans, um, OnlyFans, OnlyFans is all right. I ain't you shredded fight. like a motherfucker, man. No, no, what's no, your, no, your regimen? Um, just lift, eat good, and then sometimes I eat bad. Yo, my my regimen is eat good, eat good. You know what I'm saying? Then after that, for a month, eat bad, do what you want to do. But then go, <laughs> no, for real. But then when you when you do it, you got to go extra hard. Like I sometimes I'm too. I go night and day, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm really lifting. I'm taking my supplements. I'm doing everything. And then I'll go like a month and be like, man, fuck the gym. Eat. Man, you got to live. At my age, like, I'm cool. I'm not necessarily worried about I'm in great health. God is good. It's just that, you know what I'm saying? You still got to be able to, like, enjoy. A lot of guys that work out, they don't enjoy the... 
there's so much amazing food out there and like <laughs> how can you just do that forever like right yeah so i get my i get my um my I'm seasons. A foodie. i get I my se i get my seasons man i love working out especially like when you're an older nigga you know what i'm saying because you know it keep them it 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 it, it keep the ladies looking you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody <laughs> want that. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's really why I got OnlyFans. Like, if I was a fat slob or something, I wouldn't have an OnlyFans. I'm just doing it because fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, should I work out, see the body? You know what I'm saying? See it all. <laughs> fuck it. If you're going to pay, that's, just, that's the greatest thing in American history. Shout out American. your OnlyFans, man. Tell them, tell them where the, where, where they At King Zeno, OnlyFans. $20. Yeah. Sign up. <laughs> I'm, I'm finna start me one, goddammit. Tell you something. <laughs> fit, listen, I made I made some real money on it, right? I'm 58 years real old. Money, real money like Almost what, 60, Benzino? Like, man. Like, like the, the first month you went. Oh, man, the first few months, I probably was about 30, 40 bands. Man, that's some cool, that's and, some cool, bro. And I ain't even, I'm not even smashing. It's just me, like, ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah like and i'm like oh shit this is all right but see but again i'm an older nigga so it's like word like that's to me that's that make me feel good that that's good for the confidence like <laughs> fuck, yeah coming on my you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i probably probably made it about a little cent 70 for 70 70 large since i had it i ain't posted in a while i just did it you know what i'm saying because nigga was you know you know when you out there trying to get it you know what i'm saying i'm like well shit if i had this back then i would have if I had this in four, if OnlyFans was back when I was in Four Corners, I would have had OnlyFans in Four Corners. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, yo. Oh, man. Look, check this out. So, I seen you say at one point in time, you had more money than Jay-Z and Diddy. Yeah, I would say that's true. And that's no disrespect because shout out to both of them as far as um, making it to the levels that only a few made it on as far as I didn't make it to billionaire status. You know what I'm saying? So it's not disrespect. I don't want people no, to no, take that. No, 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 no. You're telling much, your much truth. Respect. But at that time, at that time and period, you know, we was clocking at least we was made, from advertising, just advertising was just almost two, three million a month. You know what I'm saying? And then um, like the source hip hop hits with Def Jam, um, you know, that was like we sold five million copies, so we're getting an extra couple of million a year from that. Like we was making so much money at one time, and then I got signed to like Motown. They gave me close to a million dollars, so I'm getting source money. I'm getting this money, and I need, I'm like, damn, you know. And I never considered myself like the greatest rapper or anything, but I was making good enough music and had enough influence. Shout out to Kadal Masterberg. I, you know, I got signed to Motown. I was like, damn. Motown, I like that's you know, yeah. like me, you know what I mean? But it was just, it's like certain shit that I've done, it's like I haven't even really probably like looked back on it and was like, sometimes I do, but like, yeah, we was making a lot of money. And at that point, I was like, I didn't have to answer to nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody had to answer to somebody when you signed to a label. Right. You got to answer to somebody. Sometimes you, it's a seven, eight, nine of them motherfuckers up, um, up the ladder. With the source, it was just me and Dave, and it was me and Dave. I'm up here on day. So I'm up here. I didn't have to, and I don't say that, I say it humbly because I've always shared my wealth. Okay. But as far as decision making, then that was me up here. So so by you making this statement, give me an example of how much money you could have touched just at one time. Well, I was just, one of the crazy shit was I used to told him I was <laughs> living at the Beverly Hills Hotel in a bungalow for like 1300s a night. When I left there, that bitch was like 333000 I stood there for like months. And I had a couple of my niggas in the regular rooms that was like six, <laughs> 700 a night. Yeah, I was in that bitch for like, and I had the Amex, and then just swiped that motherfucker to that little black thing come off. <laughs> See, the thing with me was, the thing with me was like, I, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I was a hustler. When me and Dave linked up, I just was a hustler from the street. Right. I didn't have any college training or anything. Right. When we making all this money, I'm sure anybody in this room would have probably felt the same way in that time. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is just when the 90s are breaking over to the 2000s. And all this time, it was just drug money and a little bit of sauce money. And now it's just like millions of dollars. And it's like, I'm, and it's like, it's like Wolf of Wall Street. Like, it was too much money. So, you a street nigga, real nigga from first, Boston. First right? and foremost, yep. Um, and you know how the game is. The game treacherous. Since 12, 13 years old. So is that why you took 
to such offense when Corley Ray say that she sold crack? Well, you know, listen, when see when when Coy said that, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta understand, like I, I'm I'm not living with Coy, so Coy's in Jersey. Okay. Um the neighborhood where their mom lives, I'm sure there's crack everywhere at that point in, in Jersey. Jersey's a rough, a rough spot. They wasn't like in the hood hood, but they I'd say probably like, you know, like mid, you know what I'm saying, to where the mother was living. So um I don't I wasn't there every night to see her sell crack, right? Okay. But I know Koi so well. That's my blood, that's my heart. You know, I I raised Koi with her mother. No question about that. I don't want people to get to keep getting the wrong impression. I say this proudly. I raised Koi with her mom. Um when you're a street nigga, the way you raise, and then you, the mo I was with Coy's mother until she was 10 years old. Okay. Then we broke up. Okay. But I was in the house with her till 10. When we broke up, I moved to another city. Her mother went this way, I went that way. Like 90% of us do, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, mm -hmm. but this is single family homes because that's who we are as a, as, a, as a culture. But we learn to adapt and Almost every nigga that's around me goes through the same thing. You have to see your kid. Now, if you're in the same city, it's a lot easier. But if you're in a different city, now you have to really have some bread to fly everybody. And you know what I'm saying? Okay. Um. I always I had Koi five months out the year, right? Mm -hmm. Five months out the year after um me and her mother broke up. But once Koi, like any other daughter, turns a certain age, and especially in the internet age, they ain't trying to hear shit. Yeah, man, like, you know, like, like I was caught, like, when, when Coy's coming up, I'm her dad, so she looking at me like, dad's my hero, and dad got paper, and dad's a motherfucker, like, she, you know what I'm saying, like, I wasn't no, you know, she, she Coy's tenacity, she, I could see me, I could see me in her so much <laughs> on how she handles herself, and it's crazy, um, but both me and her mama, we come from the streets of Boston, you know, the projects, the hood, like, generations of her mom, too. And you know what I'm saying? Her uncles, her grandfather, my, my father, her grandmother on Asia's side, her mother, like real street people in Boston. So so, so she's she got that in her. It's in her blood. But, but she wasn't around it enough to where it's like she getting cases or she's right. getting in trouble or she's, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, the mom would send her to live with me. She stayed with me a couple of times. Right. And, but, and, you know, I have a, uh, a younger son that's Corey's younger brother and they would both come Taj and Corey. I got to hate me. Taj live out here and works. And you know what I'm saying? Like Taj is her from the same mom. So, so they would all be with me five months out the year, whether it was Miami or Atlanta. Now, when they go back home and this goes for any father, right? Boys in the hood shows you it's the same shit. Look, black men, you know what I'm saying? And Latino men, man, and white men. Listen, when 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 you go through the shit with your baby mother, right? If y'all ain't married especially, then you're gonna go through the same shit that I go through. People are just watching it play out <laughs> on the internet because that's what the young people are doing. And that's what Coy brought to the table. I was just as surprised as anybody else. Right. Because I know what I've done. Sure, sure, street niggas, we have to um, show up with money to because we're not there all the time. Of course we have to do that. That's not nothing to say, oh, well, you know, people say, well, you know, money's not enough. We know money's not enough. But if we can't be there, which we can't because, because we're not living with them or we're out hustling or trying to work or locked up or running from, from, from being shot or whatever, whatever it is that young black men go through... It, we we're not it's not the Brady Bunch, it's not right. the Huxtables. This is how we have to raise our daughters in this light. And the young girls gotta be able to realize that too. And the young guys, like it's not easy. Nobody and, and I wanna say this just right, nobody really is ready to have a child in the hood. Nobody is. We want a child because we want love. We want a child for different reasons, but we are nobody's ever stable. So we have these kids at young ages, and we're and and, and we're and we're and we're trying to be parents as we go along. 
Okay. While we're trying to you deal learn. with while we're trying to deal with life of being a black man from the street. Right. And especially if I don't go to college. And especially from selling drugs. Right. And especially if I'm getting locked up. But at the end of the day, all I have is money to provide for you to eat, have clothes for school, have there is like that that is a father because that's your, yeah, 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 that's you. all of us. That's, that's the your way love we language. take care of our kids. That's your love language. Can it be it's better? To provide. Of, I, I, there it is. That's that, your love language on, to man. provide, man. <laughs> There's no a lot of people, a lot of people <laughs> looking for. Oh, I want a hug. I want this. Man. They don't understand. I had a stepfather that provided. I never got a hug. I know he loved my mom. You hear me? That's real but shit. But that was his love language. He got up every day of the uh, uh, of the of the week, and he took care of us, and we wasn't his. So I, I understand that. I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah, because it's not. It's <laughs> if 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 the dysfunction didn't. You know, we're all, the culture's dysfunctional because of the struggle. You know, what I'm saying not because of who we are as a people, because of the struggle and not having money, and you know, what I'm saying and yes. having a struggle. So so when they see what they think fatherhood should be, it's not reality. Right. Of who we are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, get I wish it could be. It's impossible. Right. It's impossible. All I could do is get it because I don't got a college diploma. The source thing, that was a door that opened up. And man, God willing, took me 17 years with Dave and we accomplished great things. We accomplished things. We were some highs and highs and lows and lows. I learned the shit along the way. I've helped a lot of people along the way. But I'm saying, as far as fatherhood, I thought I was, at, from what I was doing, I thought I was doing the right thing. Right. You from feel who right? I was first, because it's who I am first. I'm from the street. Like, I don't, my you, father was from the street. Like, what? There's no instruction my, manual. You know, there's no instruction manual. I get it. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. Now, tell me this, though. Now that you put in so much work and you build your own legacy, and Coy came out your nuts. How does it make you feel to see her successful? I'm telling you, it's, it's I, I, sometimes it should be like Twilight Zone. <laughs> well, bro, I be, I get in the Uber sometimes and the song come on. I be in Target, the song come on. And then, um, yeah, it's, you know, um, it's it's just I've been at this so long, so for this to happen mm -hmm. is just like from everything that I've been through before she 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 yes. came out, and then now for this to be happening is like damn. How Was it all worth it? Like what? You know, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, you know, I'm saying like she grew up in a studio. Ray Ray, I got another son that's dope. Like Ray Ray got signed with Baby Pun some. He was nine years old to Interscope. They gave him a big ass deal. The Eminem thing fucked that up, but they gave him half the money, almost a half a million dollars. They almost gave him a million dollar deal for the, um, it was called Three Down. Politics it was, fucked it up, huh? Politics fucked that up, but you know what I'm saying? Like, my kids grew up in studios. All my life has just been the streets and hip hop. I always had a studio. Wherever, remember I told you I had them five months out the year? Wherever they came, there was a studio in wherever I was at. Of course. Where, whatever crib I was living at, there's a studio in one of the rooms. You know, Coy necessarily wasn't always into it. Because it, in my mind, I probably was, you know, you know, what I'm saying a little more, um, a little more strict with her, because then shit, I thought that's what I had to be, you know, and then automatically as a girl, you know, because I got two boys, there's two boys, and then there's Coy, right. and then there's her, her mother's other two boys that I'm helping to raise, right. So you know, um, they're all great kids, man. None of my kids got felonies. Coy never got, um, never, you know. Um, you know, she never had a dance. You know, so I know they see her now, you know what I'm saying, doing her thing. But, you know, I take that into pride. Like, she never had to go out there. She never had a, she never had a dance. She never had a strip. And, you know what I'm saying? That's like, right. That's and there's right. nothing the matter with that. I'm not judging, but shit. On the flip side. Because we of the love, coin, we love, we tip the strippers. Listen, but it's on, the, just, on the flip side of the coin, you know what I'm saying? I'm proud that she did it. But they, because, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, if, if I don't think if I was in her life that that, you know, not saying she would, but, when you know people just have to use their common sense, you know what I'm saying on, on on things, man. Like it's not always what you think it is. Like it can't. There's no picket fences in right. the hood. There's right. no. You know what I'm saying. Right. We are who we are, and we make the best. And we have to evolve. We have to keep better in ourselves and as a community and as a people. Right. You know what I'm saying. Shit. I'm just trying to contribute to that. Man, I tell you this. 
I commend you. You know what I'm saying? I I know that Koi's on on a, 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 her road to, She's fucking to success. Amazing, man. I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Shit is crazy. And she has her own success, but I commend you for everything you've done. I appreciate it. Everything you've done. Appreciate that. Cat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you got your own legacy, and I'm for one was around to be able to witness it. You know what I'm saying? And shit, man, I'm I'm looking forward to what you got going uh, for the future. Man, you know, I appreciate it, man, for real. And, uh, you know what I mean, this was the dope. Um, the questions was the. I didn't know you was coming. Like, I didn't know he was going to come like that. <laughs> that nigga came when he did his research <laughs> on the nigga. Shout out to Dijon, man. Word, man. Now, yeah, I appreciate man. you, bro, man. Anytime, man. You know what I'm saying? When you in the A, you know what I'm saying? We hook up, man. We're going we gonna, we gonna to keep it moving anyway. We're going to stay in motion anyway. I'll fuck with you, man, yeah, fuck way, with you man. more, brother. I appreciate yeah, that. Appreciate hey, you. man, y'all tune in. Appreciate y'all for fucking with us. Uh, Cat Got Your Tongue. Benzino, it's been a pleasure, homie. Hey, man, listen, man, we here, man. Look, y'all see my eyes. I'm high in the motherfucker. <laughs> high as an eagle's pussy. Same, man. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, definitely, man. Shout out to everybody out there. Shout out to my people in Boston, man. Um, You know, and, uh, yeah, definitely, man. I'm, you know, we're going to be checking you. We're going to be checking your podcast out. Please. All right, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank Cat you. got your tongue. Cat got your tongue, man. <laughs>